shortening from hand to mind. This is our fifth grade teach at home math video series. This is week three, day four. Have you ever been asked to just tell somebody about how much something's going to cost? Well, I have, and most of the time, it's either to the nearest dollar, or sometimes we even go to the nearest dime. But to, in order to be able to round to the nearest dime, I have to be able to round numbers to the nearest tenth. Well, that's what we're gonna learn today, is how do we round numbers to the nearest tenth? So the next time somebody just wants an about answer, you could give them an answer that's only to the nearest tenth or to the nearest dime. So today, as we continue to talk about decimals, we're going to begin with a situation that is going to help us with this idea of being able to round our numbers. So this is a rather long situation, and so just sit back, listen to it as I, as I read it, and then we'll dissect it to make sure we understand what we're trying to figure out. Alvin's model airplane has wheels that are 259 thousandths of an inch wide. He wants to compare the wheels to some wheels he sees in a catalog. He notices the measurements are not exactly the same, but he thinks they are close. He needs to figure out what his measurement is to the nearest tenth of an inch to help him compare. So this is Alvin, it's a model airplane we know, and he has, he knows how big his wheels are, but in the catalog, it doesn't give, it doesn't give numbers that are all in the thousands. It only goes, gives numbers that maybe are in the tenths or even sometimes the hundreds. But in this case, it looks like they're only in the tenths. And you might be asking, well, how do you know that? Well, because he, what he's trying to figure out, it says, is he's trying to the nearest tenth, right? So the nearest tenth of an inch to help him compare. So what do we know? about this. We know that Alvin's model airplane wheels are 259 thousandths of an inch wide. So 259 thousandths of an inch wide. That's what we know. And these are about Alvin's wheels, right? And he wants to know to the nearest tenth of an inch instead. He doesn't want, he doesn't want to go all the way to the thousandths. Okay, so how can we help him? Well, we're going to use, we're going to model this using our base 10 blocks. If you have these at home, pl please follow along with us. And if you don't, it's okay. You can join us using the Braining Camp app or you can um, just follow along with us. So before we get started, when we use our base 10 blocks, we have to know what each block represents. And so there are times where I have to change what these blocks represent, because this time, if we're talking about decimals, and that decimal number was 259 thousandths, right? We have to rename our blocks. And so when we've been practicing with our decimals, we've been saying that the green cube is the whole and we've been saying that the orange flat is the tenth and the blue rod is the hundredth. Hundredth. I don't know that that came out right, so I'm going to erase that. Let's try that again. The hundredth. There we go. And that the yellow cube is the thousandth. Those are the thousands. Okay, so now we're ready. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to try to figure out how do we use our blocks to round to the nearest tenth. Well, let's represent the number first. So if it has zero and 259 thousandths, that means it doesn't have any holes, but it does have how many tenths? So how many tenths does it say? It says it has two, so we need two of these. So we've got our two tenths. And then how many hundredths does the number 259 thousandths have? It has five, so, okay. And then how many, um, I'll put those right here. And then how many thousandths are there? So how many thousandths? 
there are nine. So there we go. So bring those down. Okay, so if I am rounding my number to the nearest tenth, then my number is only going to have tenths in it. So we're gonna to have to do something with the hundredths and the thousandths, right? So I'm trying to go to the nearest tenth. Well, right now I have two tenths, but I need to decide, do I keep it at two tenths or do I need to round, do I need to go up to three tenths? Well, over here is what's going to help me to make that decision, okay? So what I'm going to do is we're going to compare. We're going to look to see how many hundredths we have, which in this case we have five. And I'm going to come and put these five on here to make a decision. Does it make sense? So those five actually cover up half of the flat, exactly half of the flat, right? exactly half of the flat. And so what we say is, is, is it worth just removing those or is it worth giving another flat for it? Well, when it's exactly half, we have made the decision in the mathematics community that when it's exactly half, we're going to, when we round, we're going to go ahead and round up, meaning we're going to Go ahead, take those. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take those and we're going to get rid of those and we're just going to go ahead and give another flat for it. Now, the thousands over here, these thousands don't really matter. Even though they're nine, it does tip the scale up a little bit, but it doesn't matter. It's still going to tip it up to rounding it to there. So now, what, what did we round our number to? What do you notice? There are only three tenths here. So 259 thousandths rounds to the nearest tenth rounds to three tenths. Because when I'm going to the nearest tenth, that means I'm giving you a number that's in the tenths. Okay, nice. Well, let's go back and let's look at another way that we can look, the, look at this. So the models are nice, but a number line can really help us know where that number rounds to because it really helps us see what it's actually closer to. And so let's look and see on this number line. We have a number line that starts at two tenths and ends at three tenths because we're plotting a number that has 259 thousandths. So two tenths can be thought of as 200 thousandths and three tenths can be thought of as 300 thousandths. So this number we know comes somewhere on, on this number line. So this one would be 210 thousandths, 220 thousandths, 200 30 thousandths, 200, 40 thousandths, 250 thousandths, but we want 59, right? Well, this is 260 thousandths, so we know that that number has to come about right there. So right here is your number. And now, is it closer to three tenths or is it closer to two tenths. Look and see where it is. I'm going to erase some of that because it looks it's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to erase some of that red for you and redraw that red for you. So right there. So is this right here, is this closer to three tenths or is it closer to two tenths? Well, it's closer to three tenths. So that's another reason why 200 59 thousandths rounds to three tenths. Nice job. Okay, so let's practice. So we have it, our number. Remember that our flats are our tenths. These are our tenths. 
Our rods are our hundredths. And our units are our thousandths. So what number do we have represented here? Can you tell the person next to you what number do we have represented here? Did you say 237 thousandths? So the question is, where does, where does 239 thousandths round if we're trying to round to the nearest tenth? That means we want a number that only has up into the tenths, okay? So if I look at this three, if I was to try to cover that flap, would it be worth, do we need to get another flap or do we just, is it not even half? Wouldn't even be half. So we can just get rid of those. And so what does that round to? Two tenths. Nice job. Okay, one more. So one more activity that we're gonna do this time. This is a little bit different. So you notice that they have all these numbers that are written in decimal form. And so my first question for you is, which one do you think does not belong? So can you look at that and say, which one do you think does not belong? I wonder how many of you said three and three tenths doesn't belong. And you said that three and three tenths didn't belong because it's only two digits. It has three and three tenths. Everything else goes into the hundredths, right? Everything else goes into the hundredths. So that may be a reason why that doesn't belong. But I wonder, was there anybody who also said, who said something different that said, no, it's three and 29 hundredths doesn't belong? Hmm, I don't know. Is that true? Why would you say that? Is it because, well, all of the numbers have three holes, but when you look at the tenths, it's the only one that has a two in the tenths. Well, what if I was to ask you, because those are definitely three and three tenths could not belong for that reason, and three and 29 hundredths could not belong for that answer, but could you, Think about this in rounding to the nearest tenth. Is there one that would not belong for the reason because of rounding to the nearest tenth? Can you look at those and see? Could you figure out one? How many of you said, ah, notice three and 36 hundredths. Why would that one not be one to round to the nearest tenth that you're talking about? Well, this is already rounded to the nearest tenth, three and three tenths. This one, when we round it, that four is going to tell us that we're going to, and where it would be placed on a number line, it would be closer to three and three tenths. When I'm at 29 hundredths, that is really close to three and three tenths. But three and 36 hundredths, would be closer, think about that six, that six is going to be closer, gonna get us closer to three and four tenths. So it doesn't belong because it's the only one when rounded rounds to three and four tenths. Everything else rounds to three and three tenths. Hmm, interesting, kind of a fun little activity to do that. If you would like to learn more about rounding to the nearest tenths and practice these skills, please go to handomind.com where you can find more activities to reinforce these skills. I hope you have a great rest of the day.